and welcome back to my channel. So you guys know that 2019 has been a big year in terms of changing how I set my goals, working on certain habits, updating my morning routine, like all of this kind of stuff. And so when Baron Fig asked if I wanted to check out their new clear habit journal, I said yes, because I figured since I showed you guys inside the Pro Joe by Claire of Minimal Plan, it would be really cool to give you a comparison for another type I mean, that, that was a project journal, this is a habit journal, but to give you another look inside a pre-setup journal. And again, like this might not be your thing, but you might be able to take a couple of things from this that you can incorporate into your bullet journal. Same thing with the Projo video, who knows? But you know what? We're gonna give it a go. So as you can see, I have taken this out of the like envelope they sent this to me, but it is still currently inside the plastic, so I have only seen this much of it. So let me take the plastic off so we have a little bit less of a glare. And we are gonna take a look at what information comes on the box and then take a look at the inside. So we have this, I, okay, first off, I absolutely love this like black, rose, gold, white, color situation. I think it looks super classy. But so we have Clear Habit Journal by Baron Fig, Tiny Changes, Remarkable Results. And on the side here, we have this Baron Fig with James Clear. And you guys, I feel like such an idiot for just now realizing this because I was like, oh cool, Baron Fig has a habit journal. Didn't realize what the clear thing was for just now made the connection, I am currently reading Atomic Habits by James Clear, and so now I have my hands on his like specially designed habit journal. I'm like a thousand more times excited than I already was, and I was already pretty psyched to see a habit journal. I was curious to see like how it's all been set up and everything, but like I feel a little bit silly that I just now made that connection. Anyway guys, <laughs> if you haven't read Atomic Habits, I'm part of the way through. I think I'm like maybe a third of the way through. I'm really enjoying it and yeah, it, it's pretty awesome. So anyway, that was a complete side note. Let's let's keep going. So we have on the back here, yeah. we have a bunch of different information. So you have Clear Habit Journal. You do not rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. The Clear Habit Journal is a combination daily journal, doc grade notebook and habit tracker. It offers a journaling system based on proven science. So if you've read Atomic Habits, like this is directly from the book, which is kind of awesome. So we have habit journal features. I'm not going to read all of this, but you guys will have a chance to kind of look into this more. I'm, I'm sure there's like all this detailed information on their website, which I will link down in the description box. However, we have open splat, printed number of pages, one line a day, 12 perforated habit trackers, two bookmarks, inner pocket, signature split grid, and powerful habit toolkits. So we might come back to some of this as we look through the actual journal, but just to give you an idea what's in there. So it is 224 pages, dateless, jet black. It's 5.4 inches by 7.7 .7 inches, which I'll give you a comparison with my bullet journal so you can kind of see how it fits like an A5 size because it is a little bit smaller. And it is designed with Baron Fig and James Clear. So without further ado, let's take a look at the actual journal. Okay, first there's another piece of paper. <laughs> So we have build a better self one habit at a time. The Greek symbol delta means difference or change in. It's a, symbolized with the triangle. So I love that they like have a reason for the triangle. That, that makes me happy. In daily life, habits are at the center of change. Your habits determine the difference between who you are and who you could be. Throughout the habit journal, we have incorporated triangles as a subtle reminder of the powerful changes small steps can deliver over time. So there we go. More information etc. So this comes in with the box and oh, the black and rose gold guys. I love it. I Baron Fig, they like knock their presentation out of the park. I have, I did a video like a while ago. It's probably been at least a year on the Baron Fig confidant and like that gray, like just, it's so, so pretty, so classy. So anyway, moving on to this one. So we have this lovely black journal. I love, oh my gosh. Yes. Baron Fig came through. There is an elastic closure. That was one of the few things about the confidant that I was like, eh, kind of don't love that because I do like having a closure and they fixed it. I'm so happy. So before we get in, let me give you a look at the size difference between a Loic term since I know a lot of you guys use Loic terms. So this is my current bullet journal. It is actually the stealth bullet journal. So the Baron Fig clear habit journal is 
a tiny bit shorter and a tiny bit narrower but as with all like Baron Fig stuff they actually so they tend to have a tiny bit shorter but they are much wider than well much they're relatively wider than other journals of similar heights which I do like because you get a really good like workspace in there so you'll see it's like a slightly smaller A5 like it's definitely not an A6 but it's a slightly smaller A5 ish we'll go with that so let's take a look so we have our two bookmarks right at the bottom and I love how it's kind of like this copper rose goldy and black goes with the color scheme so oh my gosh all right so we have this inside you can write your name etc in there and it's got this like subtle triangle background on this which is very nice oops okay so we have as always that first page that's like glued and is really hard to open but you have clear habit journal in here and on the inside let's zoom in and take a look so you have your quick start guide so you've got your index different things over here oh my gosh yes you guys they already digged my hack for me we're gonna check if that's like really how it's set up on the index page but if so that is amazing because you guys know I like to have what the thing is and then the page number and they've set it up that way. I'm super excited about that. Then down here you have your one line a day. So the easiest way to keep a daily journal, write a prompt at the top, then use that as the basis for your daily one line entry. So for example, what did I do today, etc., etc. This is one that... So one of the things I'm gonna kind of look at is how I might possibly be able to use this in conjunction with my bullet journal since I am also using the Projo for goal setting. So this is one where I could take advantage of doing a different prompt than what I do in my gratitude log, what I do in my one line a day. This might take a little bit of, of, of reflection before I figure out what I wanna do with this, but I like this idea of having a specific question that you answer every day because then you could change that question year to year. So. Moving right along, we have the notebook. So introducing the split grid, it can handle any task like a normal dot grid, plus you can divide pages into halves or thirds by lining up otherwise unobtrusive markings. Oh, that is handy. So you can do, for example, half over here, or you could split it into third, you could split into thirds or straight in half. That is kind of awesome. I'm really curious to see like how that looks on the page. Then, we have our habit tracker. So list your habits and keep track of how often you stick to them. Each page is perforated and can be torn out to display on your fridge, desk, or anywhere. I don't know if I will make use of the perforations, but that's kind of cool that you can, because I know there are some people who have a really hard time remembering to look at their habit tracker. Like it's definitely something that takes a little bit of practice and putting it directly on your desk or hanging it on your fridge might be a really good option. So you've got your different habits, the days, and then how much you have actually gone through them. And it does have, let's see, so here we go. On this side, there's a little bit that says, welcome to the Clear Habit Journal. This notebook is divided into four parts. So we just went over the four parts. And on this side, it says, for more ideas on how to use the Habit Journal, see the toolkit on page 206, which is great. So one thing I will point out is our pages are all pre-numbered, which we love, always a good thing. So let's see. So here we have the index. <gasps> Okay, guys, I, I'm a fan. So it is already split into two columns. You make the most use of your space and you've got these subtle lines. So a subtle straight line, just like a solid line. So you could do what is actually in, like on that page and then dotted line for your page numbers. However, this is really nice if you do the other way where you like to have your page numbers first. It is not like really distracting. You could very easily just start your page number and then continue on what you've got on that page onto that dotted line and like no big deal. So you also have a section over here where you can put your start in and on the right side you have your finish which is cool. I'm not entirely sure what to do with this. So this index complete and then like a little box to check off. I don't know what that means. It's like I can visually see if I filled in my index. Does it have to do with like I've completed everything on it? That I'm not sure about. We're going to see if there's something in the toolkit about that, but everything in its place, short description and page numbers. So, I mean, I feel like most of you guys know how to use an index, but like it's nice that this is set up for somebody who maybe has never used a bullet journal before, or has no idea how indexing in a journal works. Like it's got everything in there, but it's small and unobtrusive if you already know how to use it, which is kind of cool. So you do have only one full spread of index. However, since it's in the four columns, I feel like this is workable, you know? And I mean, you could always like set up your own index if you ran out of room, like we can make this work. So 
a little divider section here and then you jump straight into your one line a day so you basically have the months down the side so I assume you can just circle the different months so you've got January down through December on each side so for each month you can just circle the months I guess you could just like shade out if for example on like February there's only 28 days you just shade out the bottom couple of days and you have your little star here where you can write what your prompt is for that month so you could do a different prompt every month if you decide like hey I'm gonna do this one in January but man that that was kind of boring I'm gonna try something different for February that's kind of cool I also I love that this is undated so that for example if I want to start using this it's gonna be in February because we're it's the 29th of January right now as I'm filming like I'm, I'm not gonna use the last three days in January I'll just wait until February if I want to start this so I really do like that so you've got a bunch of habit or no a bunch of one line of days I am assuming there's 12 so hold on let's confirm so two four six eight ten twelve good so you've got a year's worth how, whenever you start that year a year's worth of one line a day prompts or one line a day spreads and then you've got another little section. I love how everything is gray, black, and copper. Like this, this is my aesthetic, guys. Like I love it. So you have this section for the notebook and a bunch of dot grids. So this actually starts on page 22. So all of these are page numbers throughout. And I do like, so for consistency, the one line a day ends on page 19, which means they do actually include the separator pages, even though they're not numbered in the page numbering system, so you don't get like lost or confused. I do really appreciate that. So you've got this dot grid section. And again, since I have a bullet journal, I'm not 100% sure how I would actually use this. This would take some reflection, but I feel like there's a way that you could make this work. So we are gonna take a quick little look. Hold on, see if it'll focus. So you have a little plus here and then a minus here, and it is really subtle, which I like. So your plus represents your halfway point, and then your minus represents your third, whoops, your third down here. So you have it for both ways, which is nice, which if you look over on the side right here, you've got your third markers and your halfway marker. Because this is a slightly smaller journal than a standard Lloyd term, I'm guessing that there are like smaller number, it's a smaller grid. I will confirm for you guys though. So we have 26 across and and 37 tall. So I believe the Leuk term is actually 26 by 38. So it's actually really not that much smaller, which is great. So you have a pretty comparable setup if you are coming from something like a Leuk term. It's a pretty similar size. You're just really losing one square off of the top because it's a tiny bit shorter. So let's go ahead. We're going to flip through. So dot grid. Do, do, do. This goes all the way through. Okay, so dot grid goes, what did I say that was? Page 22, I think. So dot grid goes from page 22 all the way oops, until page 189. So if you wanted to use this as something like a bullet journal, aside from the one line a day and the habit tracker, it's basically just a blank dot grid notebook, which is really useful. You do also have, I'm noticing, a couple of perforated pages at the end. So it looks like your last here. So from page 177 to 189, your pages are perforated. However, keep in mind that page 189 is perforated, but it is gray on the other side because it's for the next section. So you do still have that if you are somebody who likes to use those perforated pages to like write quick notes and then tear them out and take them with you. You do have that option. So now we're going to go into the habit tracker. So I'm really curious about this section actually I think I feel like the actual setup is something that a lot of us if you bullet journal a lot of us have are already familiar with this I think what I'm really the most excited about is the toolkit because it's going to come directly from stuff from atomic habits which I think could be really useful so anyway kind of another side note there so habit trackers so we've got these perforated habit trackers once again you have your months you can just circle or square around your month I I don't actually know what you would do for all like that doesn't really make sense unless you literally have one habit a month I'm not entirely sure how would you how you would use that but that's fine so you've got your days and then your habit and then you can actually do a total so however many days out of the month you've done it so you can see how effective you were in keeping your habit so you've got tiny changes remo remarkable results and then nothing is stronger than habit Ovid so these are perforated and you actually have, oops, 
on the back as well so you could get two months where you you know you would set this up for January tear it out put it on your fridge and then you turn it over and set it up for February for example and each one has a different quote which is really cool I'm not gonna read all the quotes guys okay, so these all are the set up the exact same way and once again like if you didn't use all this habit all of these habits which I feel like most of us probably don't if it's truly a habit if it's something we're just tracking that's a different story but if it's truly a habit I feel like most people aren't going to use all of these spots which is where maybe like I said I'm not really sure what this all thing is but maybe that's where like you could definitely fit a year's worth of tracking one habit and you just write like I don't know let's say walk the dog every day January February March you know like label it up here as your habit and then just do the months down here maybe I'm not really sure how that would work you can play around with that so you've got all of this, whoops, this whole section. So you basically just got the six, um, the six sheets, but 12 months worth of habits. And then this is the part I think I'm most excited about and I think might have the most value for those of us who do bullet journals is the toolkit. So powerful ways to use this notebook. I'm not gonna read absolutely everything, but I'll take you through kind of what is in here so you can see if this is something that might be useful for you or not. Okay, so the habit journal is designed to provide the ultimate combination of flexibility and structure. The majority of the journal contains pages with a unique split grid that includes subtle markings for easily dividing pages into halves or thirds. These markings can help you create favorite layouts, accomplish tasks, track your workouts, design beautiful page spreads, etc. The following pages contain toolkits, which are step-by-step -step guides that explain how you can take full advantage of the split grid pages. Awesome, I love that. So these toolkits can help you develop better decision-making habits, productivity habits, health habits, and more. Excellent. So these ideas are only a starting point. You know, you can evolve and change. So good. So you've got a little introduction here and our contents. We have habit tracker toolkit, templates for tracking your habits, decision-making toolkit, methods for more effective thinking, productivity toolkit, ideas for improved productivity and time management, fitness toolkit, page layouts for better health and fitness. So. I know personally these two I'm the most excited to see because I think that is awesome. And on the side here we have for basic instructions on how to use the habit journal, see the quick start guide on page two. Okay, so you do actually have some, some page threading kind of going on here to refer you back to the beginning if you just want the basics. So take a look. So you've got this whole sort of article on habit tracking and you have some examples on how you could use this. Okay, so yes, this is exactly kind of what I thought was going to happen. So you could say habit tracker and your habit is to read every day and then you just track your months. So then at the end of the year, you would just circle that all or leave it blank because you would see everything. So you can use the the tracker to track one tra one habit for the year or you could have a couple of different habits that you're tracking for a month so i think that is a good a good like sort of flexible way of using those habit trackers so your monthly and your annual template again not going to read all of this then you've got your decision journal so this you have a set up so this would be in the dot grid section so prediction decision review and your date so let's take a quick look at this so part one prediction first write the date of your prediction describe the current situation and what you predict will happen questions to consider so you've got a whole bunch of questions to sort of guide your thinking then record your decision so in the second section and explain the reasoning behind your choice you've got another list of questions that you can consider to kind of help you analyze it I guess and then review so leave a space for to review the results of your decision at a later date so I'm guessing you would do prediction decision it would be you know January 1st for example and then whenever you do your review you would go back and add your date here so you'd say you know three months later one week later whatever it is so and again you have some questions to consider so I let's take a look so this would be I feel like this would be really nice to have an example of an actual decision so I don't know maybe it's I, I honestly I don't know like what kind of decisions you can do so I feel like this would be nice to have so let's see a decision journal is a powerful tool you can use to make better choices in life and work. They're commonly used by CEOs and founders, investors, etc. Okay, so split it into your three horizontal. Good. So I guess, I don't know. I feel like this isn't going to be for small decisions. I feel like this is going to be like, uh, do I want to change jobs or do I want to like start investing? Things like this. I do kind of wish that this was filled out as an example just to give you a better idea of like, 
okay, this kind of helps, but like, how would this actually look in practice? So that I feel like could have been a little bit more complete there, but if you understand what this is, then this has some good like guidelines and questions for you to ask yourself as you go through and set this up. Then still in the decision-making toolkit, you have second order thinking, which I have no idea what this is. So thinking behind, beyond, Stage one, so a decision that appears to be a clear win at first glance can turn out to be a striking loss when the long-term consequences are considered. Okay, so one way to examine long-term effects of your decisions is to utilize second order interesting. So I definitely have not really heard of this before, so this is pretty interesting. So most people are first order thinkers, they only anticipate immediate reactions. Okay, so the idea is, for example, decision, buy a bigger house. So what is your first order like first level of consideration in terms of analyzing that decision. So more space for kids. If you take it, okay, what would then be the like consequence, I guess, of that would be there's more rooms to clean and in a like even long-term, more long-term look, it's more stress from a messy house. Okay, I like this. This, this actually is something that could be really, really useful. So taking a decision and thinking about, okay, what are all of the initial benefits or negative points and try and like project more into the future. So I will do A and B will happen and then what? So B will cause C to happen and then what? C will cause D. So here's your A, here's your B, here's your C, here's your D. Okay, so this is nice and I like that they gave you an actual decision to kind of break that down for you because that I find is really helpful. Then next up we have our productivity toolkit. So the Eisenhower box. Oh yeah, I've heard about these. So you've got your four different quadrants. So these tasks are urgent and important. Quadrant two is over here, are important but not urgent. Quadrant three are urgent but not important. And four are neither urgent nor important. So these quadrant four ones are the ones that you should probably try to eliminate and these are the ones that are like the ones you need to do kind of thing. So this is really, I've definitely, I've read about these, but I've never actually really done one for myself. So for example, urgent and important is write an article for today, not urgent, but important things you like want to do, exercise, call your mom, but there's not necessarily a, like a time crunch on that. Not important, but urgent is something for fun that is time sensitive and then not important, not urgent, watch television, that, that sounds about right. This is one of those that I've definitely heard of. I've never actually used this before, but in terms of decision making and prioritizing your goals, um, I have heard that this is a really good method to do, so I like that that's included in here. Then you have the Ivy Lee method. What is this? So, Ivy Lee method, hold on a second. What is the Ivy Lee method? I'll report back in a minute. Okay, so this is in terms of getting more stuff done. So the idea is that at the end of each day, you write down six, the six most important things that you need to get done for tomorrow. You cannot write down more than six tasks and you need to prioritize them in terms of true importance. So when you get to work the next day or get to school or whenever your, your work period starts, whether you physically go to an office or not, you focus on the first task. When that is finished, you focus on the second task. At the end of the day, anything that you haven't finished, you would move on to the next day. So here you've got your six things. So if I set this up tonight for tomorrow, when I wake up the next morning, I have to exercise first, then I have to go do the second thing, and all the way through. Interesting, so then you, at the end of the day, you can do notes. So how would we use the notes section? Okay, so this I think would be kind of like a way of doing your daily log, where you set up your most important tasks, and then anything that comes up in terms of rap rapid logging during the day, you would do down here so that you don't clutter up your six main tasks for the day. I think that's kind of how you could use that. So. That is your Ivy Lee method. Oops. And now your fitness tool tool kit. I will be perfectly honest, I probably wouldn't use this. I am not super good about exercising and it's honestly not like exercising like this isn't really a priority, but for a lot of people it is, so we'll take a look. So, workout trackers. You've got, for example, a strength training workout template, CrossFit workout template, and a running workout template. So, if you're somebody who already does sort of fitness tracking, this might be something you already do, but for those of us who maybe don't, this is some good ideas. So I like that they give you a couple of different template ideas. And then a food journal. So for example, you could split it into your date, the title food log, your, I'm guessing that's body weight, BW. I'm guessing that's, 
I, I like have no idea. I'm guessing that's your weight. Um, and then on the left side, you would list down the things that you ate, and then on the right, you could list car fat, carbs, protein, and calories, and then have a rent like a total down at the bottom. This is another one that I probably won't use. If I did use it, I would probably just use something like the left side, but this is an interesting way of sort of longhand calculating your calories if that is something that you do. And then that is the end. So in the back here, we have a little pocket. Ooh, I like that it's like a slide in pocket. That's kind of cool. And since you have the elastic, stuff isn't going to fall out hopefully quite as much, depending on if you have something like super tiny. And you again have the little triangles on the back here. So I will say that if you already bullet journal and you already are doing things like you know, one line a day or habit tracking, this is maybe not the most necessary sort of notebook. However, since there is a very large section of the notebook that is just a blank docu dot grid journal, if you're somebody who likes the Baron Fig notebook and wants something that actually has, um, for example, the the two bookmarks, you've got the elastic closure, and you were per perhaps using the confidant before, this might be something to consider because it's basically, you know, just, a normal notebook with a couple of extra little bells and whistles. I will say that I think it is really nice having this section back here. There are certain parts of this section that I think I would use more than others. So for example, the decision making toolkit I think is really interesting. I do wish for that first one that they had a little bit more Expl like kind of, you know, an example of how a real decision would break down in terms of that prediction decision review. And the productivity toolkit, I think that's really nice. So again, I didn't actually read the entirety of the explanation that was on the left page for all of them. I just kind of took you through the general. So there is probably more information in there. So when I go back through and read it, I'll, I'll it might clarify things a little bit more. I have to say the look of this notebook is really really nice i i love the colors like let's be honest i just love this whole aesthetic of like kind of copper black and gray you guys know that's that's my jam so yeah i'm i'm not going to do a pen test in here just because i had done one previously in the baron fig confidant and it feels like exactly the same paper so if you guys are curious you can go and check out that other review to see the actual pen test but these notebooks as long as you aren't dropping down like super watery paint or you know something that puts down a ton of ink or a really wet fountain pen this will deal with all of your standard pens gel pen fine liners like all of that kind of stuff so i'm just not going to do a pen test because this is already going to be a super super long video so yeah that is a look at the clear habit journal by Baron Fig. I, I do think it is a really interesting idea, especially for some people maybe out there who haven't found bullet journaling and aren't quite sure how to start. If you already bullet journal, this might not be the thing for you, but it is really cool to see that this idea of tracking your habits and finding ways to actually influence your habits and try to change them for the better is becoming way more mainstream. I think that is awesome. Also, if you've read Atomic Habits, then this might be even more interesting for you. Like I... I think that it's really cool that, you know, James Clear has worked with Baron Fig in order to make this habit journal based on the information in this book. So that is that. I hope this was helpful in some way, shape or form. I will drop down all of like the tech specs and the cost and all of that fun stuff in the description box, as well as the website so you can go check it out for yourself. But that is all I have for you guys for today. I will see you in my next video. Bye. Hey guys, so if you've made it all the way to the end of this video and are actually watching my end screen and you're not subscribed to my channel, I would really appreciate it if you would. There's a little button right there for you to do it. And if you're interested in watching some more of my videos, I have links to two of my older videos off to the left there, so you can check those out if you would like to. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.